Hello everyone, welcome back to another tactic video. So today we are focusing on Tiago Mata and Bologna. Uh, this one's going to be uh, pretty awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. We'll pull up the tactic now and here you are. This is what our tactic is looking like. This is our 4-2-3-1. Now Mata does play a few different shapes. He does play the 4-3-3 a bit as well. But I had the most success replicating the style he plays using this formation, and I also do feel that, as I'll explain later in the video, this style does fit how he plays more. He does tend to use the 4 th the four two three one most, as well as when he builds up and does other things in terms of the way his team plays, this system does fit it in the most, uh, the most simple way. Like, it, it, you get the best, uh, you get the same shapes and the proper shapes from it doing this setup. So, those are the things that, uh, a reason I've chosen this. I don't have a 4 through 3 version. If you do want one, I'm happy to try to work and adapt one as well, but I felt this got me the best results. So, it's time to get into the video, talk some tactics, show you some examples through Scout and real life. I've added some nice little visuals to the real life ones for you guys. And, uh, and yeah, I think it's time to get into it and uh, adore my caveman looking appearance that needs a haircut. <laughs> everyone it's time to now talk tactics um so to mota is quite interesting in terms of what he looks to do as a manager he is someone that is very willing to change his shape and adjust things to suit the system he's going up against now this doesn't mean he's willing to go from a 4-2-3-1 to a 3-4-3 to a 3-5-2 to a 4-3-3 to a 5-3-2 it's just more of a situational adjustment based off what happens in the games. Now, he looks to usually use two systems throughout the season. Um, the two that he's mainly used so far are the 4 2 3 1 and 4 3 3. He's thrown in the 3 5 2 a little bit here and there, mostly because Mihailovic used it heavily last year and he took over last year. And so, because of this, he's done things um, slightly at times to adapt to it, and also because the players are still kind of used to some of those systems. But after last year, where there was a good mix of things, this year it's been really heavily just the 4 3 and 4 2 3 1. It's been 61% 4 2 3 1 and 21% 4 3 3. Um, massively whopping numbers in terms of the usage of these two formations, racking up 82% of all usage so far, meaning there is a lot of time usage in these formations compared to very the small other ones. So the other ones I think is a 4 4 2 and a 3 5 2 are the two other C's used so far. I believe, I don't remember off the top of my head, I didn't write those down, um, but I think those are the other two he's used so far this season. So that means that really those are the two he tends to worry about. Now, this mainly is dictated by pressing structure and opponent. Usually when they're matching up a team with a three back, they'll play a 4-3-3, and a team that's playing a four, they tend to play 4-2-3-1, but they also will at times play 4-2-3-1 in games and then move to a 4-3-3 in pressing if the opposition plays, um, sorry, if the opposition builds out in a three to adapt to that system. But that's usually what will happen in terms of the way he chooses formations to play. Now, I, as I said in the beginning, went with a 4-2-3-1, as I feel this is the best way to get the best style and system of how he plays into FM. I can make 4-3-3 if you guys want, but I think this is the best way to get what we're looking for with this system. Now, the, B, the big three things that I mainly think that Malta is really big emphasis on are his buildup, his vertical passing, and his high pressing. These are the three most important things that I feel will dictate the way your system plays and will make it appear like Mata's does. Now, he allows a lot of kind of freedom in the attack in terms of the way that his team does stuff, but the way his team does stuff is dictated around a certain structure and shape in those final thirds of attack. A lot of the way he plays is dictated around certain shape and structures, and that leads to the way his team does stuff. And we're going to talk about those shape and structures in the way he does that stuff, soon but that is mainly why i want to talk about those three because they are all each based off certain structures and shapes that adapt throughout the pitch and then create opportunities from this adaptation throughout the pitch as there are kind of these i think mainly three well i'd say four main shapes two pressing shapes and two attacking and build up then maybe more. there's a few i think maybe five or six really but you'll see what i mean there's some shapes that he generally uses and his team quite heavily play in to get the outcomes that he desires from his team. So, um, 
when the team looks to build out, which is I think the thing thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about building out, getting to the front, and then defending from the front from there, which I think are going to be kind of the key things. Um, there are some defensive concerns that we are going to talk about in a bit too, but mainly the way that Mota looks to build out tends to be two different ways for the short build out and a and one main way for the uh, long build out, and this is kind of how his team tends to look in build out. It is a two four. 3-1 kind of shape, or also you could say a 2-4-4 four, four shape of some kind. Um, mainly what you're looking for is the team wants to have a U... Oh, that is not the right one. I meant to click this. Has a U shape here for long balls and has a flat lines here and this is kind of what you see in terms of the way the team builds out is this is the the stuff you'll set up mainly setup wise the kind of, the team will usually look like this now from this shape a few different things will happen one is the short pass which is played into one of the two center backs and the other is the long ball now when the long ball happens which we'll talk about first because that's kind of a little more interesting in my opinion uh a few things happen these players look to make runs like this. The wingers look to make runs like this. The 10 tends to hold position here. And the 9 ends up being the target. So Skorupski will aim at the 9. And the 9's job in Van Hoydink or Xerxes is to flick the ball on for these players running in behind. Or knock the ball down to Ferguson, who then can either find a pass into these guys running, making runs in behind, or play a short pass into them for Xerxes to run onto in behind, and they could play Xerxes in behind. Those are kind of the options mainly for the long ball. Those are obviously the desired, hopeful options, but the long ball. And this doesn't always happen, but they're kind of the ones that you tend to see him hope for and look to create with these options. Now, when it comes to the short passing ones, things are slightly different, as there's two shapes that kind of can come out of this one. The first is obviously this 2-4 shape, which we're looking at currently. The team looks to play short to one of these two center backs before looking to play into the middle, breaking some lines of the defense before going wide or going across the middle here, and then into one of the wingers who will tend to drift wide as the play develops a bit here, with the 10 pushing a little higher. The goal is mainly to get the ball wide or to get the ball centrally and play in kind of these triangles here. Sorry. These, uh, these triangles here tend to be the ones they will look for when building out of the back. These are the main ones you'll see because these are the ones that are going to be the most secure and the most safe in terms of the way the team looks to play as they'll allow them to get the ball into these areas here and they can also connect between the two center mids as well. So there's your bit of a box shape there and your uh, triangles on the outside with the goalkeeper center backs, the wing back and the other players there. That is what you'll generally see of them in terms of getting out of the back. They'll get the ball between these guys, look to build something, these guys look to build something, and use these rotations to play through the press. Now, if they are playing short passes and, say, the team is sitting off in a mid-block, there's a slight difference as well that occurs, which I'll show you here. There's a, something else, too. But if the team puts it up in the mid-block, usually the wingback will get forward. He tends to be a lot more aggressive. You'll see the team revert into kind of this shape going forwards. These guys will tend to tend to be a three. The right back will tuck in a little more. And you'll see a shape kind of like this at times from them as well. So as the balls progress forward, normally they're a little higher up the pitch, actually. Let's move them up the pitch a little bit because that's kind of where they're going to be. So you'll see this pressing, not sorry, you'll see this build-out shape from the team. My general and jumble looking at my scripts here. <clears throat> so you'll see this kind of shape from the team as well, which is kind of a precursor to the shape we're going to talk about in a bit. But this is if they're, Kind of got the ball, and they're building in this three shape a little bit here. As it's slightly different, you'll have the triangles created here. You kind of have this trapezoid shape almost as well, with these triangles created here. And then also you'll have the much kind of longer wide triangles on top of that uh, as well for the team, with a box in a midfield being created by the, uh, by the left winger tucking in and the 10 as well with the two center mids. So you kind of have this shape as well if they've been able to press the ball forward, but the opposition sitting off in more of a mid block. The three, the, the back four will become a three with the wing back pushing high, the winger inverting into this space, becoming another 10, creating a box shape in midfield 
with the striker also being at the top of that, pushing the line back, hopefully creating some space for them to play into. So that's kind of the structure of that stuff there. Now, the other build-out shape I do want to talk about quickly, which does occur occasionally based off the way the opposing team presses, is an interesting one, which is reliant on that other shape there. This is a 2-3 shape, which looks more like this when the team is going forwards. You will have these guys invert, the swinger invert here, the 10 sit here, and the wing back pushed really high. This one, they'll look to usually get it wider, or they'll look to go here before hitting a more of a direct pass out wide there. And it's the deep lying playmaker that shifts out to this wide position. Now, normally, the first pass is always going to be looking over here, and then if they don't see it, boom, it's into him. Normally, he'll be drifting out late once this guy makes a run, which will usually be done off that, because the whole point is to make this kind of, it's a bit of a quicker one that occurs. So it's, this guy's here, they're getting set up for the build-up, they go, they motion to move the ball this way, then he goes off that motion, he drops here, the ball comes back, boom, it's kicked out wide, or he sets up, makes a little motion with his hands, that means the trigger, he goes, he drifts, boom, ball played out wide. And that's usually what you'll see happen with that. It's a bit of a different structure. It creates a bit of a different shape, but it gets them forward a little quicker as it's a bit more of a direct pass from the goalkeeper, bypassing hopefully that first line of pressure, which is on the edge of the box that is waiting for the two center backs to get the ball. So just three kind of ways they build out, two main ones, but some structures there that adjust, sorry, three main ones with a fourth kind of structure in the way they do that. Now, as the ball progresses forward into the opposition half, the thing that Malta really encourages his team to do is a lot of high vert, high intensity vertical passing. Now the team will take their time building the ball out of the back, but are really encouraged to play a much, um, much more aggressive uh, style where the ball goes forward a lot more. Now you can see this by the way they play in terms of this, which is the two is a two, one, two. Five shape that you'll see the team play in a lot and be really in. It tends to look like this at times with the way the team sets up. You'll have the two center backs sitting deep, the deep line playmaker being your lone six. You'll have usually your eight sitting a little deeper, and the right back will kind of tuck in and invert a bit to be that extra spare man. This can be swapped with these two interchanging positionally, as well as this guy tucking back, this the 10 dropping back, in, the winger inverting, and the fullback coming wide to create this extra five. You also can see it as well, where these two go high, and he stays high as well, and he comes here, and you see it almost as a 2-2-6 two, two, shape on top of that as well. But these are the shapes that you tend to see the team usually operate in most of the time when in possession in the middle and final thirds of the pitch. Usually you see that initial shape with the back three building, which transitions into this further shape here, and then if they're really, really aggressive, you can see it where you have six guys in the box, these two or these two on the edge, and the center backs are really highly aggressive in the middle here looking to provide support for a back option. But this is what you'll generally see. Now, the team is encouraged to play vertical passes because if you think about the way a defense sets up, which I'll just set up one quickly so you can see. Let's uh, do this to this so I don't get stuck. Again, please just don't worry too much about the numbers. I'm literally just sticking stuff in. See, they're in a 4 3 3. So, if they are doing that, they're probably going to be defending in some kind of shape here. So, maybe they're set up in a 4 5 1 looking to defend, right? So, he is going to encourage his team to play vertical passes. Because they have a line of pressure here, they're able to cover these guys. So, they can't cover all these guys here, meaning that either they're going to have to drop bodies back like this, meaning that there's more people deep so that there's free space for this guy to beat someone, or if they do have the bodies higher up like this, he will encourage his team to break the lines with passes, going like this, bypassing this line of pressure here, getting the ball forward and just getting by tons of people. And that's what Mata will look for. He always wants his team, especially the six, be making these vertical passes forwards into these areas here or sometimes you'll see it where they might move everyone over like this so everyone's man matched up over here and they're all bringing the pressure and tons of people like this he also encourages his team to make long switches into the channels for these wing backs that are open or winger that are open depending on how it's set up as well 
So he wants to see that too from them where they can get an extra player open and space out wide and they can then carry the ball and transition it forwards with those. And that you'll see in the clip went quite well in terms of the way they switch the ball into those wide areas where someone's open through either short passing across the line or through a long switch of play. Now in the final third, um, actually let me try and move a lot of these guys because they are not really useful right now. Um, <laughs> I should have uh, done that before. But in the final third, you'll see things a lot where the wing back is now the wide one. You have all these guys in the box here, like this. This guy's kind of hanging off to the edge here. You'll have these two guys on the edge, this guy deeper here, and these guys like this. Very, very aggressive shape. And you say you'll see the ball out wide. They'll be trying to work something here with maybe some player coming in and overlapping, center back coming to support, things like that. Especially Cal Fiore, the left, the left center back, will come and make overlaps into these areas at times. Really being highly aggressive is the... Push. A real modern day uh, center back looking to make overlaps, getting himself into these key positions going forwards and making a big difference, aiding in the attack. So it's a very, uh, very technical, very uh, interesting role, but it's something that if you're really excited by and you like that kind of different style of center back play, I really suggest you watch Calafiori play. He's a very, very interesting player and one that's really awesome and exciting to see. But they'll generally look like this in the attacking third, this shape here. Uh, they have the opportunity to go long uh, switch to the opposite uh, player here with a cross, or they'll look to usually work it with a short ball into one of these guys here, which is usually what you'll see. A low cross into them, looking to work it with some combination play with these players here, so they can get the opportunity for someone to finish. And that's what you'll usually see. Um, so that's kind of that. Now, the big thing I want to talk about after this is the way the team will look to press. Um they tend to operate in obviously a man oriented pressing structure via the 4-2-3-1 or the 4-3-3 now this obviously depends on how the opposition will set up in build up something that we'll look at now so if the team is doing this in a four shape which we'll show here say a 4-2-3-1 right he's got him okay so boom so there's that these guys will he'll mark up he'll mark up one of these guys will mark up here he'll mark up here he'll kind of mark up here he'll mark up here with this guy this leaves these guys here now the 10 we usually take the six and the nine will take one of the strikers if they pass to this guy the nine will make an arced run like this cutting off the ball to the other guy forcing it wide here and that's kind of the big thing they'll force look to force wide they'll force this ball wide normally he'll be a little disconnected it'll be here he'll now come and apply pressure he won't try to win the ball he'll try to do one of two things this guy will usually probably come into support he'll kind of be here and he'll probably come into support as well here these are the one of two things they try to do baloney will try to bait the ball inside to one of these two players here the 10 or the six because they're looking to this pass be played, jump on it, win it, and attack from that area. That's one thing they're going to do. Or they're looking to encourage this ball down the line, which is a difficult ball, because there's a man already on this guy, and it can go out of bounds. Because normally, most wing, most fullbacks tend to be on their footed side. So you don't have a left-sided player who's going to be... It's, you usually have a right-sided player who's going to be hitting it down the line, having to curl it like this. And if it's a left-sided player, that's even harder, so it's even better for you. But usually, they're going to try to force that down the line, meaning this will either go out of bounds or be a long ball that this guy can win and knock down to the center back, and now, boom, Bologna have possession again. Those are the two key things they look to do when pressing. They usually operate in this man-orientated system, looking to go like this. They'll leave one player open like this occasionally because they're okay allowing that to happen. Though if the team, say, is building up in a three, things change just ever so slightly. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So say they're playing a 3-4-3, uh, three, three, right? We'll say 3-4-3 three, three is what they're doing. Um, Sickles in here. Boop, boop. Okay, so this is what you'll, you'll actually tend to see. These guys will kind of come in and mark Normally, what you'll see happen is, is that this player 
they'll come across and mark like this. This is what you'll see happen. They'll go man for man. Usually center backs will mark up against one of the wingers and one of the other nine. And the nine, the one wing back will mark the covered side. In essence, what happens is, is if, if this ball is played wide, right? So they'll set up in their their they'll set up in a in a four two in a four four two pressing shape, right? They'll be ready in a four four two. So they'll wait for this build out to occur with this three. When the ball goes to one side, the players will press like this. He will then come over here, he will tuck over here, he will tuck over here. And everyone now is set up in a man-to-man -man system. They will be aggressive, pushing players high to mark everyone man, doing the same thing they did before forcing that initial ball wide before baiting a ball into the middle where they can win it or a long ball in behind which they're able to win or it's forced out of bounds because it's a tough pass to make and that is how they look to do it via their pressing structure those are just some of the examples of the way Bologna look to attack look to defend and look to do those things now the one quick thing I will say that two one two uh uh, five shape is very dangerous, especially in the counterattack, where if they lose the ball from the six or two of those center mids, uh, they can counterattack really, really easily. And they do concede via a lot from it, but it's a high risk, high reward thing, which pays off a lot in terms of the reward because you have so many numbers in the box, so many people forward, that you can get goals super easily from it. But as I said, just a bit of an explanation of how the team looks to play, what they look to do in terms of their shape and things like that. Now, though, we're going to talk a little bit more about some real some examples from FM and examples from real life, and I'll show you guys, and we'll go through some of those. We'll go through the three key principles, which I did mention, which are the vertical passing, the build-out structures, as well as the pressing shape. So, time to get into those. All right, everyone, so here is a great example of a short build-out. As we talked about, the team does build up usually in a four, in a, uh, sorry, in a two, four shape with usually the rest of the players clustered around the nine. They tend to be a little spread out, but if they go, do decide to go long, you'll see them clump together and uh, really come in tight to create a U shape, which we'll show in the real life example. But Skrupsi will usually play this ball short to a center back. And from here, the play will continue. Normally they'll go to the weaker side. They tend to get it wide too, which is pretty common of them. Uh, normally the ball is played into one of these guys first from either here or there, but this one, there's a great vertical passing option, which shows you again, the vertical passing this team looks for, and it allows the team to get forward immediately. They look to play through pressing constantly, getting the ball wide to those advanced fullbacks before getting to these areas and looking to find crosses. Obviously it ends up with a clearance there, but that's exactly what we're looking for in terms of that build out. As I was talking about with this team, they set up in this shape here. You see the two, you see the other four there, and you see that clump of four there. And you see he goes short. There's too much pressure here. They're not going to be able to play through. They're covered. They're going to play to the open man. Boom. They're playing through it. There's no one there. Again, pass here. And now this opens up because he's come short. This guy's too nervous about all this. Doesn't realize the run from Ferguson behind. Finds space. It's a great pass behind Ferguson, which gets the team forward immediately. And that's the way they're going to look to play through with a vertical passing, with direct passing, taking their time to find that pass, letting the off ball movement occur is a perfect example of it. So we'll go and I'll show you guys two real life examples. They do go long and they do go short. I couldn't find a perfectly good long option for you guys. There wasn't a ones that weren't punts, but I'll show you the long and the short options, both in real life. And um, yeah, we'll get into those now. Here is an example of a short goal kick for the team. So as you guys can see, here's that shape we're talking about. You just can't see the left back here, unfortunately. So I sucked the little uh, in the shape, but you have it here in terms of the one, two, three, and then four is down here. You have the two players in the middle creating that shape of the four, two shape in buildup. And the team looks to play through it. So they have the press here. They play the ball through the middle to the press. They look to transition forwards. Now the wing backs move forwards there to pull space and build people away. Now there's more room for the three to pass through. And the team Udinese is dropped off here, so they're going to take their time and pass around the back before trying to find a ball forward into, an into the opportune moment. But that's exactly what I'm talking about in terms of this. They're going to look to pass the ball around and find those right opportunities when building out. But that's just a little example of the shape you see. So here we can see the longer goal kicks I was talking about. We have long and short goal kicks to show. This one's hit long, and now you can see that group of players I was talking about here. There's that U shape that's created around the striker. We have the right winger here, the 10 here, and the left winger here. 
We have the left back in this space and the two other center mids here helping support. But the balls hit long into the striker, who's the guy with the blue circle and that you created. These guys are ready to run in behind if there's a flick on, and Ferguson here is ready for the knockdown. This is an example of a knockdown as Xerxes wins the ball in the air and knocks it down to Ferguson here, who then gets it forward. Xerxes looks to turn and get one of those wingers in, who this time there's space, so he pulls the space. Xerxes can run forwards, but from it, he created a counter-attacking opportunity by having bodies forwards. It's cleaned up there and defended well, but you can see they have the bodies around. They're able to move around and create space and able to assist the striker in getting forwards. So guys, here is a good example of the team's shape for uh, the way they play. We'll go to the 2D Classic as I think is a good way to see kind of how the shape does look. But this is going to focus on that attacking shape I talked about, that 2-1-2-5 shape we saw. So the ball comes back out wide here, and you can start to see the shape start to develop here. So even in this spot right here, you see the 2, the 1, the 2 here, and then the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 shape. This almost in this one looks more like a 2, 2, 6, which it can also develop into at times as well. Um, but this is kind of the shape that you tend to see the team play right here. You can see it developing even more into that as well. These guys being here, even there you saw Ferguson dropping in a little bit before moving back forwards. But it's just the shape that you guys can see here. Obviously, further loses the ball a bit and just get it back before going out wide. But again, this is what I'm talking about in terms of that shape. You can see the two back, everyone else aggressive in these higher up positions. The front line of players occupying all the defenders, forcing them deeper and back. The space in the middle for these players here. And that's exactly what we look and we see from this further. Working it through the middle, switching it here, and then we have a shot at goal. But that's exactly what I'm talking about in terms of the shape being there, creating those spaces. There's lots of abilities to have vertical passing. There's ways to pass across as well as keep the shape going with these players out wide, offering options and outlets for the long switches. But yeah, that's a bit of that. We're going to look at some real-life examples now from um, the way the team builds up in their attacking shape, as well as you'll see a bit of a switch as well, just a bit of a longer one rather than the shorter one we just saw recently right here where uh, Forther plays it out wide before the ball is then switched through two shorter passes of further and Moro switching it over a long one, which we'll see in the real life video. All right, everyone, here's the real life example of the attacking shape of Bologna. So we can see the ball being transitioned forward by the six here and then passing off to the right back. We now start to see all the bodies in the final third. We see the left back here. We see the left winger, the 10, the striker, and the right mid, uh, the right wing over here. We can see the eight over here, and we can see the six who had received the ball there as well. And we can start seeing it, everything developing into this shape here. I'm going to stop it here. You can see the shape. Obviously, the six is back here. You have the right back here forming the two in the middle with the eight. You have the left back out here. Then you have the left winger, the 10, the striker, and then the right winger over here forming that two was a set of backs back there the one in terms of six the two and then the five shape here and that's where you see it really develop and the the two one two five in terms of getting all these bodies forwards and creating opportunity and spaces and you can see out here there's space here you can see here that even though one of these two guys can receive it there's passing lanes through these lines here for Cagliari who are struggling to defend this and Cagliari have a four-man back line meaning they're dropping an extra player in here because there's five guys back forced to defend everyone they're defending in a 5-4-1, even though they set up in a 4-2-3-1. Sorry, 4-3-2-1 for Cagliari. So what we see is the play develops here. The team continuing to adjust their shape, and we see them now transition the shape again. Here is it again. We don't see that 6 anymore because he's out of the play, but here's that front 5 again. The players all coming into that shape, and the 2 again created. But now we have Orsolini cutting, coming inside here, Ding that 2 with the other with the other midfielder here and the right back now becoming part of that front five of players and you can see the interchanges in terms of the way they're doing it and the way they adjust their positioning and we can now see here the the pass that they look to make in the terms of that switch which is that vertical switch to that open space for the left back who's now able to do something with it and now look at all these bodies getting in the box but again we have the same shape one two three four five players ahead two players on the edge in that same exact shape I was talking about before. And they continue to create this shape constantly, where they have one player open at the back post in a wide area, always able to receive the ball, and then players in the middle clogging up, congesting it, 
so that they're always passing lanes and always someone nearby. And we see here, they try to work it around and eventually they attempt to work it to the back post. There's your overlap from a player, low cross, nothing happens. And it's bobbled around before it's headed clear. But you can see how they're trying to adjust how to create that shape and get an outcome from it. Okay, guys, uh, funnily enough, there's a great example of the pressing shape right after the shot. So here is a great show of the pressing structure that the team employs. You can see here a four, two, three, and a one in the pressing shape. You can see here Ferguson is covering their six. The two center mids are covering their two center mids as well. Our right back is coming in inside here to help with this. Our, our center back is coming to push over here. This guy's got him covered. We've got everyone pretty much covered. The winger can come over and cover over here. And we have men covering everyone. We have the tight man marking there, tight man marking here again. And look, we win the ball. They have a chance to win it back, but we're able to keep it and retain possession. And that's exactly what I'm talking about in terms of that man-for-man -man press that Mata really looks to employ. Here, there's a man right on top of Arzinski. He's forced to play it long. The ball is long into a contested area where we have, uh, I forget his name, but he's come and pressed there. They've made it drop. Moro does have a poor pass. California does it well. But again, poor pass, again, leads us retaining the ball. And now we have possession again to build through. And that's exactly what I was talking about in terms of the high pressure, the high intensity on these teams, especially on build out. Really difficult to play through the aggressive man, man, man oriented press that Mota uses. And that's a perfect example of how teams struggle to play through it in a way to win the ball back. And then also you see the vertical passing right away. Here is where we can see an example of the pressing structure for Bologna in real life. So, this time Cagliari is pro uh, progressing the ball out of the back. The team is waiting for the right moment, and now the press begins. Now, the man-to-man -man pressing structure is going to commence, and you're going to see it here. Orsolini is pressing this player here. The ball's gone in to the other center back here, and the striker right here is ready to make the move. He's getting ready, and he's going to now sprint to close him down and force him out wide again. Boom, he's forced him out wide. The winger's going to come and press. He's not going to try to win the ball. He's going to force it. Now look, they've played it back into this, in, towards the middle. Everyone is man, 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 man. Everyone's marked up a man on every single player. They're all man-oriented pressing. Do this, force the long ball. It's a mistake. Out of bounds. Bologna win the ball back, and time to start possession again. And that's an example of the pressing structure. They wait to the moment. Boom, they jump into action. They press man from man, force the ball wide force you to play it down the line or back into the middle where the pressing trap can occur and they win the ball. So everyone, we can see here how the tactic did. It was a uh, really, really awesome to see. It worked incredibly well. Um, as you guys already know, a lot of things worked out in terms of the way the team set up and everything else looked really, really good. We struggled to find that long ball. As I mentioned, it just didn't really happen. I think cause the, the game focused. So, um, sorry, tactics. Focus so heavily on the short distribution out of the back, uh, the play out of defense, as well as... Uh, actually, no, it doesn't say this, so that's very surprising. But, um, yeah, but it just... I, I honestly could not find it. I went through so many goal kicks, and I couldn't find the um, long goal kick the right way. There was lots and lots of punts that were similar, but they weren't the same because the players weren't connected as much on punts but it was just absurd i couldn't find one and i also use a smaller database to make these tests go faster so as you guys can see i can't actually look past frozenone i can only cover these games for you guys so i only have eight games to go through and of those eight games i couldn't find one which is just so annoying to me but it's unfortunate it's one of those things i think it just happens by using the smaller database maybe i need to do the larger one but just something to let you guys know and it does suck that i didn't get to do that but the team played exceptionally well it is obviously sucks that they did get knocked by Juve in the third round, but 81 points, 24, 9, and 5, exceptional from these guys. Xerxes got 20 goals. Also, he got a fair few assists, I believe, as he got five assists as well. Just to show you that in terms of um way he played, really matching up with the real life uh style of what he did and how things worked out. So I'm really happy with the results, some of the players and stuff like that. Uh, we can go through it in terms of assists, Christensen getting the most, Orsolini doing incredible, coming up with the most goals and assists, just being ridiculously good off that right side. And then also we can see uh, Jesper Carlson doing amazing left, and then uh, Lewis Ferguson, 20-plus goal contributions, just amazing and immense at that 10 role, which he played a good, almost in exclusively fashion. But yeah, you can see, obviously, Froehler picking up some assists, that very much um, similar role as he replaced 
Ah, uh, my God, I'm forgetting his name. Dominguez. Dominguez. He replaced Dominguez, who went to Nottingham Forest. Uh, he replaced coming in to do that. So things really matched up well in terms of the player statistics. Certain players getting more of things less than others. Moro played the deep line playmaker role as well. But yeah, things really hit on terms of a lot of that stuff. And I'm really nice to see. And it just, it's great. It matched up so, so perfectly well. Um, we'll quickly look at some of the pass maps throughout the season, as you guys can see from the passing networks. Really, really nice to see. Uh, obviously, we did talk about um, the sake that there will be kind of one lone player left there a lot. And as you see, he the wing back wasn't as high here, made a lot of these passes. But um, just the, the way the team was a lot of this game, even in the game we lost, you see it, the one, the you see kind of the two, and you see that other line of players there that creates that that two one two five shape we talked about. So it, it's very much there. Um, we can look at the game against Juve as well. The shape is is really in terms of there in terms of this one. It's a little more defined in terms of the the front line, the right back not high as much and kind of more of a two here with that, but just not getting forward as uh, the 10 sitting a little deeper. But that's pretty much how it is. You can see in terms of the way it is, it's very much the right shape. It looks correct. It looks, actually, if we don't want to look at that, it's got a red card in the game. That's not going to be the right way to look at things. Um, again, a little deeper here, but it's still kind of the same thing. I'm sure if we go to the analytical data uh, as well, if we look at uh, teams, we go to pos uh, average positions with the ball. If we just look at us, we'll see what, uh, uh, here, let's go 45 minutes just to get a better idea. It's a lot more that kind of front front five shape there with those guys with all these guys here the 10 kind of being a part of it as well but you can see that kind of the the lone three players that are kind of back centrally and everybody else running forward so you can really see the shape developing and coming into its own in that sense but yeah i mean i couldn't be happier it hits on a lot of these things it hits on almost everything we're looking for in terms of that and yeah I, it's just it's great to see um it's really really nice uh to see it and uh, see it working in those ways but uh what i want to uh talk about now is the tactic how it looks and how it is set up so the tactic itself is a 4231 on a custom tactical style the mentality is positive um and the first role is the sweeper keeper on defend with tackle harder this is to have him be more aggressive and sweep a little higher up um i would say support but i felt that when watching um Skrupski, Though he did play longer and shorter passes, they were always to his other center backs. They were never high-risk passes. They were more short passes to his center backs. Not as that much risk, but if you do feel like it, you can as well. It's not the worst idea, but I felt this kind of made his passes much more of what I saw in real life. A lot of the passes short side-to-side -side or direct long balls and behind off punts and things. Uh, your fullback on support is stay wider, close down more, and mark tighter. This is to force him to play that man-to-man -man press we talked about when they when they do come up against the back three and they press in a 4-3-3. This does make him press in that aggressive shape for the 4-3-3. Both center backs are just on tackle harder, being that aggressive style as they are, since they are left a lot uh, open a lot in transition. They are very aggressive. Even when the team does defend deep, they are very eager to come forwards and step out very quickly, catch people offside, and be aggressive there. Stay wider, close down more, uh, and mark tighter. Same exact thing as well on both of these. Just, again, super highly aggressive. Very, very much touch tight to players. Just being that really high line, high aggressiveness that we see a lot in the pressing structure. Now, your deep line playmaker, who is the guy that's going to sit in these areas here, he's also asked to stay wider because, uh, as we talked about in build out, this player can tuck in, coming really, really high up. I'm sorry, I can go out wide. This winger tucks in here. And you almost have kind of these the uh, a four player line here, and this guy drifts into this space here and occupies the left back role as the guy for build out being the left back in this area. So that happens a fair few amount of times, and something that occurs. Now your other center mid is much more of a box to box. He gets up and down, does a lot more of the hard work. Uh, he's usually found up in the front line with these guys here, and possibly even just along these two guys as well, doing stuff, um, doing stuff to help out in that sake as well. But we get on him. He is a center midfielder on support with get further forward, move into channels, and tackle harder. Uh, your right wing is an inverted winger on attack. Having that man-to-man -man pressing structure is close down more, ease off tackles, and mark tighter. 
This is to ensure that the player doesn't get drawn out as much. They stick tightly to the player. They're really tight and really aggressive, but they don't get drawn out and uh, tackle and get beat. They're much more aggressive just to force them backwards and force them into the pressing traps that we'll talk about. Uh, they're an inverted winger on attack. Here, 10 is an attacking midfielder on attack with shoot less often, close and more, tackle harder. Again, it's the pressing shape, the pressing structure. The 10 in the middle is a little more aggressive. He's the one that's really trying to win the ball back once they play it into the middle. Highly aggressive, trying to win it back. I believe my example um, for the pressing structure in Y Scout uh, shows this. I don't remember exactly. There's some I saw that showed this. I don't know if it's the example I used, but there's a fair, there's a few I did see where the Ferguson, where they're pressing in their shape, Ferguson wins the ball, nicks it off the guy, and they counterattack right away. So that's why he's a little more aggressive trying to win the ball. These guys here trying to funnel it inside where there's a lot more body. So that's why I have them on ease off tackles, because I want them to encourage the ball inside over trying to win it on the win it outside. Um, again, very similar to the opposite sided winger, inverted winger on support. This one, though, he's a little more supportive because he's got the additional help of the wing back overlapping a lot more that um, I want him to tuck in because also you'll see him tuck in as well. And the long ball and long switch be played from these areas out wide to the left here, where this player is bombing forwards on the left wing, which you do see. So because of that, he's on sit narrow to help open up that space for the overlap. Um, Again, sit now or close then more, ease off tackles and mark tighter for the inverted wing iron support. Finally, advance forward on attack, shoot less often, close then more, tackle harder. Now, in real life, Xerxes does tend to drop in a little bit more, but I found with the deep lying forward, it didn't work as well, and he would drop too far in, and the team would get caught having possession in these areas here, and not someone high pushing that line forwards, which does occur in their system. So it didn't really help, um, and I felt that advance forward gave me the more the role that I wanted. He does drift a little wider than needed at times, but it kind of works. It works the best out of all the roles. I don't think um, this role in Mata's system is transferable properly to FM. I don't think even with individual instructions, you can get the right thing for the player. It's just, it's, it's one of those hybrid roles that changes too much between two different roles per individual uh, system going on, individual moment going on within the game that it doesn't always work right. Because he's a pressing forward at times, he's an advanced forward at times, he's a deep length forward at times. It rotates between all three in the game that it doesn't always work that well. Uh, but he's an advanced forward on attack, shoot less often, close them more, and tackle harder as his additional instructions. Again, this team is on a positive mentality. In possession, we play incredibly narrow. This is because the team does look to really, really narrow. Though they do like to hit long switches, which is why we have shorter on, because this will have them hit the ball a little longer at times out wide. I don't have overlap left on because he doesn't always overlap the player. And they don't always look for it. But because he is on wing back on attack, they will obviously have him overlapping and he will be an option at times. So you won't see it as much, which is why I didn't select it. But if you do feel so feel inclined, feel free to. Um, obviously pass out of the back, shorter passing, higher tempo. Now the team does adjust tempo as the game goes on. They're kind of slow building out of the back. And then once they get into the final third, boom, switch gets flicked and they go much higher. This though, I found worked a lot better with the higher tempo. It got the ball forward and they played a lot more of the vertical passes that I want to see from Bologna, because as we talked about earlier, they're very big on their vertical passing shape. So something that helped by having this higher tempo, work the ball into the box. They look for tons of cutbacks. Tons of crosses uh, from these areas just out in these spots here. So that's the thing we're looking for. And low as well. They don't tend to clip them up as much. Generally looking to cut it back and play it lower. But they do look to play into the box from these kind of wide areas. Or shuffling it around this top spot here. Now distribute quickly I ask. Because I want them to get the ball forward and get it quickly out. They do get it. The goalkeeper does quickly get it to the center back. So he doesn't tend to sit on the ball too often. The team does look to counter press immediately. As well as counter once they've won it. Which is very, very big. They do counter very quickly and very fast because they do press super high and aggressive. It leaves very low numbers back. So when they do win it, they have to go towards goal because they're going to just, it's stupid not to. Now they have prevent short goal to distribution and much more often as the team is super high, they look to press and they look to win the ball back as quickly as possible off goal kicks. They are pressing up against you right away the second you take that ball out. So high press, and higher line. The line is not it's much higher. It tends to be normally around higher. In possession, the line does tend to be much higher, but usually it is kind of around the higher thing when they are defending, as well as get stuck in because we want them to be aggressive. They do look to be aggressive. They'll foul a lot, and they'll give stuff away because they're looking to just win the ball back as quickly as possible and play man for man, and if they can't win it off you, they're going to be aggressive and try to stop you from getting through since they have so many numbers 
forwards at times and so many numbers pressing that if you are through, it's a pretty easy, like, you're you're going to be one-on-one -on -one against someone. So if you beat someone, they're kind of screwed and at a disadvantage. So they have to take you down and be aggressive in the foul. But that is the Targo Malta tactic. Obviously, we've gone through all the other stuff before this, but remember to like and subscribe if you've uh, if you liked it, but also just ask me some questions about this or if you have anything you want to say or request other tactics. We have so many coming. Um, the next one up is a Peter Bosch tactic, um, and there is even more as well. I'm just checking my list here, but that is uh, this one wrapped up. We got that coming up next. Remember to drop some comments if you guys are interested in any of this stuff. And um, into the outro now, where we have a little special uh, thing to talk about, too. Well, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy our Thiago Mata tactic. Um, I'm really excited uh, to do this one. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed baking it. And uh, it's one that I'm excited about because I'm a Milan fan, and he could become the manager of Milan sometime soon. So it's exciting to see uh, what could come of this and uh, what could possibly happen. So I was feeling good. Felt good about, uh, felt good about it. And if this is how he's going to play with Milan, I'm excited. I think Teo will have a great role, suits our fullbacks a lot better. I think we have some great players to suit this one, and it would be a lot of fun to watch him take control of this Milan team and get stuff out of it. There are a few roles that I think he'd maybe swap Leo to the right, maybe have um, Pulisic on the left, but there's some things here and there that could be switches, but it's it's fun to look at, and it's exciting to think about how this could work for us at Milan. But uh, the big thing I want to talk about is uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone for all the support and all the love. Uh, it's been amazing on this little two month or so journey since so been making tactics it's been fantastic and i will be sure to keep making as many as i can but i just wanted to say that now we do have memberships available you guys have done so much uh, love and given me so much support i actually could monetize the channel a little bit um again i am not forcing any of you to have to pay to have any access everything will continue to be available through media fire links through steam links none of it will be paid the only thing you can do by doing the membership links is you get cool little emblems and things I designed and emojis that you can use. That's just the cheapest tier. On top of that, we also now have um, a middle tier where your requests are more important. So I'll put those requests at the top of my list. And then the final tier, which is a little substantial, it's about $10 a month. You get access to all my save files for my offline saves. You get access to every tactic early. The second the tactic is done, you have access to it. You get all my write-ups for my tactics, which are things that I write up on my own that you don't see. You get all the analysis, as well as you may get some extra clips and things I don't use in the video, but some other stuff like that as well. So there's some awesome stuff that's available. But again, I just want to reiterate to all of you, it will all continue to be free. I'm not going to force you, any of you, to have to pay to access any of this content. None of you should. This is all about me sharing my love of football with all of you. And it's just that you can pay to get new, it's just to get more access to stuff. That's all it is. Again. I don't, you, none of you need to pay for any of this. I'm not making you pay for any of this because I'm not, I don't care to be an asshole about that. All of you can have access to everything. You will just have to wait till the video comes out. That's it. You just have to wait. That's all it is. Um, but yeah, so they're all there. They're all available. Feel free to subscribe and do all that stuff. If not, I don't care. Thank you again for commenting and liking and watching. That's all I ask for. And if you do, please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if you haven't, and just be sure to drop any comments uh, about the tactics or future requests. I know I've got some recent ones by Ariola and Leverkusen and, and tons of things happening. There's so many. I mean, my list is ever growing. Um, if you do subscribe to some of the membership tiers, you do get to see my short list of all of my tactics that uh, are going to be up next. There are some that are just not even chosen. I'm going to make them and there's some that are. Um, yeah, right now it's kind of an ever changing list based off who is uh, requesting and what's being requested. So. It's a lot, but it's awesome, and I'm loving every second of it. And I really can't thank you guys enough for all the support. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'm just excited for the next one, uh, which will be a Peter Bosch tactic, which will be coming out on Sunday. And then on Tuesday, next, a week from now, finally, 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 as all of you have just been continually requested, we will finally have the Chabi Alonso Bayer Leverkusen tactic out in a week's time. So you'll have that there. You can stop asking me. I've gotten like 15 of those. I don't actually don't know how many, but I've gotten several Alonzo requests. Hirona and Alonzo were the two most popular ones. There were some that I'd chosen just because I really wanted to do it. But yeah. Thank you again for watching everyone. And uh, I'm so looking forward to catching you guys in the next one where we talk about PSV and Peter Bosch.